Hello, my name is Francesca Finelli, and I am the Associate Director of Graduate Career Development at GSAS Compass, your Office of Graduate Career Development. And today we will be discussing Job Search 360, making the most of LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is a fantastic tool that you can use to really uh, grow your connections and your professional network. So we have a few goals for today's presentation. Hopefully at the end of this, you'll walk away with an understanding of how to create a compelling LinkedIn profile that tells your career narrative, your unique career, career narrative. It's a LinkedIn can be a much more extensive look at you and your experience just beyond a one page or even two page resume. Using LinkedIn, how to build, uh, to build your brand and your online presence, as well as develop your professional network through connections and groups and how to search for jobs and make connections at target companies. Please note that the focus of this presentation is jobs in industry or outside of academia. However, a lot of these tools are the same for academic jobs as well. I do think that Twitter is probably more popular for, um, than LinkedIn within the academic world. However, I know many academics who still use LinkedIn. So these tips can be used for the academic job search as well. So first off, I just wanted to start with what is LinkedIn? Um, so it's the world's largest professional network. I got these numbers from um, the LinkedIn website it set itself saying that they have over 7 million users um, in more than 200 countries and territories. And so that 93% of employers use LinkedIn as a tool to research candidates. I, uh, we often joke in the professional development field that um, if someone doesn't have a LinkedIn profile, do they really exist? Now, this is just a joke. And I have talked to many students who have said, you know, I don't use um, social media, including LinkedIn, for mental health reasons, for the reasons that I don't want to waste time on these, that I don't want to have a public profile. And that is completely understandable. And there are other ways to network, um, particularly informational interviewing, which is another video within in this series or module about networking. So watch that video as well and learn how you can do some in-person networking. Um, LinkedIn is just one tool that you can use, but is by no means the only tool. So it's a way to be connect to others and to be found. As I said, those employers doing research sometimes might look for you um, online. I include a link to my LinkedIn profile on my resume. So if people are interested in learning more about me beyond the one page that I provide with, to them, then they can click through and see my LinkedIn profile, which is much more extensive. And it's a way that sometimes hiring managers can find you. Um, I at one point actually received an email from a company asking me if I wanted a role in career development at Sotheby's Institute. Uh, it was like finding a needle in a haystack. I have a, my bachelor's degree is in art history, and then I have a professional uh, experience within career uh, development and counseling. And so uh, I was invited to apply to that role. Now, um, that doesn't always happen that way. You might get a lot of junk um, from employers inviting you to apply to positions, but it is a way that employers can also find you. It's also a way to discover professional opportunities, a great way to research organizations, and to find to find contacts at com target companies. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And then also it is a great way to kind of keep up to date on specific companies and industries that interest you. And, uh, and I'll show you again how to do this. So first I wanted to start off with how do you make a compelling profile? Um, and I'm going to go over the basics with you today. Um, at, in a moment or at the end of my presentation, we're going to go to LinkedIn to check out the website and I'll show you how to navigate it. Um, and there's a lot of tips also on LinkedIn learning, which you have access to as a student. And a lot of the content that I'm showing to you in this presentation is from LinkedIn learning. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just, uh, you can find more tips there. 
So uh, the first thing I think is that a lot of people don't actually have uh, or use a, a headline. So a headline is a one uh, is a short one liner that appears under your name and your photograph. And it also shows up to any material that you like on the platform. So it's the first thing that people see along with your photograph. Um, and so having a, a photograph is a great way for employers to find you as well. Uh, people are more likely to look at a profile with a photograph. So, um, you know, most iPhone or uh, most um, new smartphones have excellent cameras, even better than some of the, the fancy uh, SLR cameras that I used to use, you know, like five years ago. Um, so set up your iPhone, have a friend take a photo of you or your smartphone, um, and you can use that as a profile picture. There's so many different filters that you can use, um, but going outside, getting some nice natural light is a great way to do it. And you often just wanna start with a picture of, of your face. You don't want to um, have anyone else in the photograph and it's nice to be wearing uh, professional clothing in that photograph as well. So make sure that you do have a photograph that is a good way to get more eyes on your page. Another way, as I mentioned, is this one, uh, this header that you can use. So you can use your current job title. So uh, Associate, Associate Director of uh, Career Development at GSAS Compass, or you can use something that's a little more flashy. And this is a great uh, tool or a suggestion for current students, because you might not have an official title. You could say, you know, researcher or scholar or student at Columbia University. But there, are, um, that tagline is another just great opportunity for you to showcase specific skills that you have or how, again, you want to brand yourself and your skills. So in a moment, we're, again, we're going to take a look at some profiles so you can see, but a personalized header is a great way to show an employer that you're just more than a, you know, a current student, that you have skills that you're also offering them. A great way is also to use those industry keywords. Uh, so for, for my industry, saying career development expert or connection maker might be a great way um, because facilitating connection is a large part of my work in career development. And then, of course, you might want to add your contact information and location. So your email address, a website, um, and maybe where you're based. And also, you can actually personalize your URL. And I will again show you how to do that when we go to the platform at the end of this presentation. Another area that I think enough people don't take advantage of is the about section, which is also known as your elevator pitch. Um, I'm sure we mentioned elevator pitch through many videos in this series. So again, an elevator pitch is just a concise introduction to you, your experience, and the skills that you have. So it should, as I mentioned, uh, really feature your education, your experience, and your skills. And these are good questions to ask yourself to answer or to maybe fill out this about section. So think about what are your top skills and your interests? If you're not sure what your top skills and interests are, make an appointment with GSAS Compass staff and we can kind of help you explore and think about these uh, and, and maybe identify those top skills and interests. What have you accomplished? What are you most proud of in your life? Now, this can be academic, this could be non-academic, um, and but we want to often, LinkedIn is about celebrating those accomplishments. What makes you unique? Um, what do you, what have other people complimented you on? Uh, are you a great writer, a great communicator? Um, has, you know, a, a, a colleague once told you, you know, I really enjoy how you edit um, some of my work as well. You're such a great editor. You, you know, have a great way of, of catching both, um, you know, issues within the writing and you give great feedback. Um, so what are things that make you unique? And then what do you do in your free time as well? Uh, I think adding some personality to your LinkedIn profile is really appreciated. Um, because think about it from the perspective of an employer. We all spend a lot of time um, at work and we work 
and collaborate with many people. No one works in a silo, no one works alone. And so uh, employers want to get a sense of who you are as a person because they're going to be working with you every day for at least probably 40 hours a week. And we, you know, it's nice to have a coworker that we can connect with. So if you show some of your personality, for example, I'm a runner, I add that to my profile. I also really enjoy cooking. That's something that I added to my about section. Gives you a little sense of who I am as a person beyond just my professional life. Another thing that's really important to a LinkedIn profile is, of course, that experience section. So it's a detailed list of your education, professional, and volunteer experience. Make sure that you include that volunteer experience. It's such a great way to really bolster a resume and to show your interests. Um, so you always want to list uh, first the education. That's typically what I see. And then um, you know, any other professional experiences that you have. Oh, excuse me. I, as I mentioned here, you list your professional experience first. So unlike a resume, uh, where you often put your education first, you start with your professional experience or your volunteer experience. And then often education is at the bottom of a LinkedIn profile. So you start with that professional experience and then at, later on you show your educational experience. You always want to use a reverse chronological order with your professional experience, meaning that the most recent opportunity that you've had is listed first, followed by ones after that. So you always start with the most recent. You want to use bullet points just as you do on a resume, or this is the only time I'll say you could write a first person narrative or par use paragraphs. I see this uh, kind of quite often actually on LinkedIn um, is more uh, narrative descriptions of work experience rather than bullet points. If you're working on a resume, I always suggest keeping it to bullets, um, but on LinkedIn, there's more flexibility. Be specific and use keywords. As I mentioned, um, keywords can be found in job descriptions. So let's say you're applying to positions as a data analyst and also as a tutor. Um, you have tutoring experience and so you want to apply for positions like that too. You might want to make sure that you're including keywords from uh, data analyst descriptions. So maybe specific skills that you've used such as R or um, you know Python and those can be listed in the descriptions of of experiences. And then um, you want to also use, uh, you know, keywords from tutoring would probably be teaching, mentoring, and those are keywords that you can use in the description from your tutoring experience. And as I mentioned, really focusing on volunteer experience really rounds out a profile. Then there's also skills and recommendations. So you, by adding skills and recommendations, you, it adds credibility to your profile and increases the likelihood that you'll be discovered on LinkedIn. So those with a more complete profile often get more views. So skills, um, LinkedIn only displays the top three, and that's something that you can decide which skills are actually displayed. And you can hide non-relevant skills on your profile if you want to. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And then recommendations. Recommendations are a great way to, again, just show how other people, uh, you know, you, you can say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm really great at what I do. Um, but it's also nice to say uh, when, when other people say, oh, yes, this person has helped me or has done a, a great job in their role. So getting those recommendations, again, can really add credibility to your profile. So um, I'll show you again how to ask for a recommendation on LinkedIn. You want to ask for a recommendation from someone you worked with directly. So that could be a manager or a fellow peer or maybe a co-chair of a um, volunteer activity you were a part of, um, but it's someone you've worked with. Um, and then sometimes if you're even, um, you might want to draft a recommendation for someone. So if you had an internship at a startup company, the CEO or the um, chair of that organization is probably really busy. So you could go ahead and reflect yourself about the skills and experience you have and the things that you'd like them to highlight and you could draft something for them uh, and then get their approval and then they can post it. So um, this is a nice thing to do to uh, help the employer and also to make sure that you're featuring the things you want to in that recommendation section. And only ask, as I mentioned, first connections for endorsements and recommendations. Um, someone who actually actively knows you. Um, 
because again, you really want to make sure that you're being truthful on your profile and people who don't know you and your skills very well cannot speak to those skills. So make sure you're being truthful and only asking first connections for endorsements or recommendations. Finally, there's a whole accomplishment section that you can add to. And I know that many of you have some of these. So publications that you've done, maybe even um, patents, courses, projects that you've taken, honors and awards, test scores, your GRE or something else, your languages that you speak, that's so important. We have such a large international student population at Columbia. So make sure that uh, you're mentioning English and any other uh, languages that you speak. And then of course, any other organizations that you're interested in. So um, this is a great way to, as I mentioned, um, add additional information that you might not be able to add on a resume to the LinkedIn profile. And then this also uh, leads us to activity and posting and building your brand on the website. So it's nice to have a profile, yes, but I do think that that extra step of building your brand on the, on the platform is all about posting an activity and checking it regularly. I check LinkedIn every day. It's a big part of my job. Uh, but for you, if you're a job searcher, you might want to try and work into your workflow of uh, your career development and applying for jobs, checking LinkedIn. And so um, you should update your profile regularly with engaging and relevant content. And this is a great way to show your connections, what you find interesting and to promote what you're doing. So updates could include maybe a really interesting article that you read and you want others to know about it. So just like on any other social media, you're doing something interesting or you've read something interesting and you want to share it with others or some resources that others might find interesting. And finally, also professional updates, such as graduating from GSAS, um, maybe you participated in a panel discussion, maybe you published an article, or even just completed a volunteer opportunity, um, participated in a hackathon, little things like that that you might say, oh, why should I put that on my LinkedIn profile? It's actually nice to have those updates because the more active you are on the platform, the more often you'll show up within people's feeds. Also, I wanted to quickly go over the types of connections on LinkedIn, because this is something I think some students don't understand. Um, and so I think that the, so there's many different types of connections. On LinkedIn, there's first degree connections, which means that you are actually actively connected to them on LinkedIn. It's someone that you know or interacted with, and so you've connected with them on the platform. A second degree connection is someone who um, one of your direct contacts knows that person. So I have a large number of first degree connections, but I have an even larger number of second degree connections. And that's where LinkedIn, this is kind of the sweet spot is these second degree connections. Um, because often you'll go to, as I mentioned, it's a great way to target contacts. Uh, LinkedIn is a great tool to use to target contacts at specific companies. So let's say I'm really interested in working at NASA. I could go to the NASA page, see um, who works there, and I might actually be able to find, I don't have any first connections at NASA, but I might be able to find that second connection there. So that means that um, that person in my network could actually then introduce me to this person. And that's why it is so, so important to only connect to people that you actually know. Um, because if you connect to a wide group of people that you don't know or have had no interaction with, they are less likely to introduce you to then a second connection. So I connect to people on LinkedIn if I've uh, met them in person, if I've uh, gone to a talk that they've given, if I've exchanged emails with them. Some people I've never met in person, but I exchanged an email. And it'd be a great way to, you, you know, you forge a connection um, offline and like to kind of keep in touch with them. So I try to uh, only connect to people who I've had some interaction with. Uh, and this allows me to then have a wider range of second connections. And then, um, as I said, I can often use those first connections to introduce me to those second connections. And then finally, third degree, no connections. But if you're really interested in that person, you, can, you don't have to only connect with them, but you could follow them. Just as with, again, uh, Instagram, 
Twitter, any other social media, you can follow others without actually connecting to them. And I'll show you how to do that. And then also, I just wanted to discuss that there are different types of connections in real life as well. So those are known connections. Those are people that you actively know, again, and have, um, you know, some understanding, uh, you know, your colleagues, people you've worked with before, um, your peers, your professors. Warm connections are people that you might not know very well. So this would be like a person who I've exchanged emails with. So I don't know them very well, but I know them well enough that we've had some kind of shared experience. We've exchanged emails. Another warm connection would be someone who's an alum of GSAS or just a graduate from Columbia University. Um, you've shared the experience of going to Columbia. And so that would, I'd say, be a warm connection. Known connections and warm connections are much more likely to assist you because you have some kind of shared experience or knowledge of each other. And then, of course, there's these unknown connections, such as third degree connections, who you don't know at all. And these connections are much less likely to help you and assist you because they just don't know you. This is human nature. If we know someone a little bit, we're more likely to assist them. If we don't know them at all, we're more likely to not want to offer help. So how do you make connections? And um, as I mentioned, went on about this at length, but only connect to people that you know. And as I mentioned, alumni are a great place to start. You always want to personalize a connection request. And in these connection requests, it's a great way to remind them of how you met them. Dear so-and-so, it was so nice to see you yesterday at such and such panel discussion. Really enjoyed hearing about your experience. Um, I hope we can connect on LinkedIn. So give them a reminder of how you met them and why you're interested in connecting. Make sure that you're using professional language and always check for spelling and grammar when you're writing these messages. So what I do is I write a message and then I'll walk away for maybe do something else and then I'll come back to it and read it again, which helps me catch mistakes. Then you can also use this get introduced feature to second degree connections, which we've talked about at length. I'll show you how to do that. You can join groups. That's another great way to make more connections and to be able to send direct messages to people. You can follow companies. And, um, you know, so these are just a few ways that you can make connections. What I recommend is um, spend some time building up your connections. As I mentioned, people from undergraduate, your current peers, your professors, anyone that you've done any volunteer work with, your friends from high school, find them on LinkedIn because the larger your first degree connections are, the more first degree connections you have, the more second degree connections you will have as well. You can also use LinkedIn to search for a job. It's a very handy tool. It is an excellent aggregator of jobs. So there are a couple of different ways you can do this. You could save a job search and have specific jobs sent directly to your inbox. I have done this in the past and it was incredibly helpful. As I mentioned, you can join groups and sometimes they post jobs in these groups. Um, and it's, it's a good way to just kind of stay up to date with specific uh, you know, interest that you may have. And again, I'll show you these groups. You can follow companies of interest and that way when they post something, sometimes companies will say, oh, we're hiring for such and such position. You'll get that update on your feed. Also talking to people who work at the company, so finding contacts through companies. And then of course there are featured groups such as GSAS, Columbia University, Ivy League, the Ivy League. These are all groups that you can join and often uh, jobs are posted here. So um, at the bottom of this video, after you watch this video, there are additional resources to assist you with this. I'll list some of these groups so you can join them as well. Since you're part of the Ivy League, you may join this group. As I mentioned, you can find all of these tips and so much more on LinkedIn Learning. So let's go to the platform really quickly and I'll show you a little bit more about how to use it. So first thing I wanted to share again is this LinkedIn Learning. You all have access to this as a student. And LinkedIn Learning, there are courses on things like Python and C++, how to use Excel, as well as you know, um, these other skills such as finding your time management style or rocking your LinkedIn profile. Again, um, there are further resources at the bottom of this video and I'll link to a couple of LinkedIn learning videos that I particularly like such as rock your LinkedIn profile. So much more in depth look on how to make a really effective LinkedIn profile. 
So I wanted to show you a couple of things. Um, first, let's actually start with my feed. So when I log in, the first thing I see is everyone who I follow or companies that I follow, I get updates from them. And a nice way to stay in contact with someone is to actually like something that they've done. So as a reminder that, you know, it's a kind of a quick stay in touch, right? Um, also, I get updates on, um, you know, people's, uh, maybe if they've moved jobs. Um, oh, great, you know, user Zoom. Um, now this is maybe someone that I could connect to. As well as, as I mentioned, people just finding interesting articles that they share. Um, so things that I might be interested in. And of course, maybe positions that are open to a uh, company or if they're looking for workers. Um, and so I, I think that your uh, Zoom, uh, excuse me, your LinkedIn uh, feed is going to look so much different than mine because um, of the things that you follow and the people that you're connected with. But this is a great way to just kind of stay up to date with information on uh, things that you're interested in. Then, I wanted to show you as well um, my own profile here. And as I men mentioned, you can kind of make a custom URL. As you can see here, I do have a custom URL, it's F Finelli. And you can do that here by edit your public profile and you can actually customize your LinkedIn title right here. Instead of just having your name and a bunch of garbled, you know, numbers and letters after your name, you could just use your last name or, or something you like. Um, you can also see, uh, you can edit content, you can edit visibility. So right now, um, my LinkedIn profile is actually public, but you can only have first degree um, people be able to see your profile picture or people within your network. Um, it's up to you. So as you can see here, you have access and you have control over all of your settings. So if you're someone who's, um, you know, a little uncertain about um, having your profile be incredibly public, you can actually go ahead and limit some visibility as well. Okay, going back to my profile here. So as you can see, I use a tagline as well, career counselor and community builder. This, and then I also include a couple of different letters here. I'm actually a, um, a limited permit mental health counselor. So that's something that I've included here as well, just to show some further context for myself. And then um, as I mentioned, you can, um, so you can tell people that you're open to, uh, you know, networking or connecting. You can add profile sections here. And then also I wanted to show you my about section. So I have a pretty long about section. I see ones that are much shorter, um, but I really try to show, uh, I kind of thought about what am I most proud of? What are the accomplishments that I would want to share with others? Um, and I make a pretty, you know, I, I have a statement of confidence here. So I'm a dedicated and accomplished career counselor with seven years of experience advising graduate students at Columbia University. And I give a little bit more about my approach and what I have experience with. And then, as I mentioned, I have, um, you know, when I'm not uh, helping students explore their career interests, I can be found cooking elaborate meals or running in Van Cortland Park in the Bronx. I live in the Bronx and I went running this morning. So um, as I mentioned, you know, it's it's pretty extensive look at me, my experience and my skills. And this way, uh, an employer or someone looking at my profile gets a much more in-depth look at me and it's a narrative. I can sell my story this way. Sometimes you can't really do that through bullet points or descriptions. Um, and so the about section is a nice way to do that. Another profile I always show is Michael Jackson. I like Michael Jackson's profile, not the singer Michael Jackson, but a different Michael Jackson because um, he actually graduated from GSAS and this is his profile. And so here again, we have a nice tagline, political analyst, researcher, we have a nice photo, we have a background photo, and then we learn a lot about um, this person through their about section, insightful writer and forward thinking political and policy analyst possessing exceptional writing, research, editing skills. So right away, I know kind of how they're branding themselves. They're a writer, they're a policy and political analyst, and they have these specific writing skills advanced knowledge of policy issues and political landscape with a concentration in political science, urban studies, and sociology. My professional strengths are superior interpersonal, 
writing, and research abilities, as well as a talent for explaining complex public policy and political ideas to various policy stakeholders in an easy, easily understandable and plain spoken manner. Any of you who have been a TA or have taught a class also have this skill of explaining complex material in a plain spoken manner to other students. So again, these are things that you could highlight in your LinkedIn profile. And then he kind of goes on to explore other things that he has skills in. So this about section I see at, when I meet with students, you could make an appointment with a GSAS Compass staff member to review a LinkedIn profile and learn how to use the platform. But what I often see in student profiles is that they just don't include a tagline or an about section. And I think that's really a missed opportunity to include very key words and to build your online brand. Also, as you can see here, I have my experience. I provide some details. And what is nice as well is that it, this shows all of my experience. On my resume, I only include my most recent activities. But here, you can actually see my work experience all the way back to 2008, kind of dating myself here, when I this was one of my first roles. So I used to work in the arts field before I came to career development. And um, you can learn a little bit more about my career journey also through my LinkedIn profile. I like to think that you, uh, perusing someone's LinkedIn profile is almost like asking them for a coffee chat. Tell me about you and your background. Uh, and so you can actually see a little bit about me and my background uh, just by looking at my LinkedIn profile. Another thing that you can really focus on is your volunteering, any licenses and certifications that you have. I have all of my educational details here. And then of course, as I mentioned, these, these skills, you can now demonstrate your skills, you can edit your skills, you can have, as I mentioned, these endorsements. And then here are these recommendations. And so I actually asked a student that I worked with to give me a recommendation because we had a great working experience and I wanted to show other students that they could trust me as a career advisor. Um, I also have my languages, organizations that I'm part of, and then companies and groups that I am a part of. Um, and so any of these groups or companies, as I mentioned, will come up in my LinkedIn profile. So now let's talk a little bit about how to search for positions or how to find um, people at target companies. So again, you can set up these job alerts. You can um, you know, pick, so I have one on wellness. I'm just kind of interested in seeing what wellness positions there are out there. And then they get sent to me in, frequently, uh, in, in weekly emails. Um, and then you can also, uh, you know, once you start searching for specific jobs, um, then they will show up in your recent searches. So let's say, um, you know, you're searching for a job and we want to do one for diversity and inclusion. This is a very large growing field in many different companies. And so um, let's say I'm looking for a position and, you know, I, I find, um, oh, interesting, you know, there's this company called, um, think. Uh, okay, so I want to see here and let's say, oh, this position actually looks pretty interesting to me. So I'm going to go ahead and then learn about them. Okay. Um, so this is a specific company and you can learn a lot about the jobs there, the, the people. And as you can actually see, there's 142 employees on LinkedIn. So this is a company I really want to work with. It's very interesting to me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to follow them. And so that I'll get updates about them. And then, as I said, okay, I don't know anyone who works there right now, but um, you know what? I want to talk to someone who works there. So um, what I can do is go ahead and see, oh, great. So I know quite a few people who work there already, and I can see that I have some second connections there. So let's say with Alice, I can actually look at her profile, and then I have all of these mutual connections. All of these mutual connections, I would actually feel comfortable with reaching out to. In particular, Jessica is someone that I've worked with quite often and I see her quite regularly. So I might actually reach out to Jessica and ask her to introduce me to Alice. Um, I could ask her to do this in an email or um, some other way, but I could say, hey, Jessica, I can see you're connected to this Alice Warren um, at this uh, at Think, which I'm really interested in joining. Might you be able to share her email address or send a letter of, you know, an email introducing us? Um, 
that's a great way of, of finding that. So as I mentioned, kind of the second connections. Let's say I didn't have any second connections. You can also go to filters and then try and find people according to your school. So let's say, um, you know, I'm gonna add Columbia here. Columbia University or Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. I'm also going to add just Columbia because that's a much wider net. I'm gonna show results. And here are folks that have graduated from Columbia and now work at the organization. And so this person, Trisha here, PhD, they graduated with a PhD in sociology. So, you know what, I might actually reach out to Trisha and say, hey, you know, I, I also go to GSAS, really interested in learning more about this company and organization. Might you be willing to chat with me for 15 to 20 minutes or 20 to 30 minutes for an informational interview. I'd really love to learn more about your work at Think, and particularly within diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I could do that right here by messaging her, or let's say this is someone I'm just interested in following and I wanna get updates from them, I'm gonna go ahead and follow them as well. So you don't even have to connect to a third connection, you could just follow them. But this is someone that I would consider a warm connection. I don't know her at all, but she went to Columbia. And so we have this shared experience of going to Columbia and she might be more more likely to meet with me and discuss her career path. Also, I mentioned another way that you can connect with people is through groups. So let's say I'm going to go with diversity and inclusion, and I can search for that in jobs, but I can also search for that in groups. So here is a global diversity and inclusion in the workplace. Um, and so if I join this group, that means that I have access to all 73,000 members. So you can see some of these groups. So let's say I'm part of the Graduate Career Consortium. So this is a group of career development professionals who work across the United States, as well as in Canada. And so as you can see here, there's content posted in these groups. There's also a lot of, um, you know, people looking for open positions. Um, and then also anyone who is in this group, I can message them. So even if I, this person is a third connection, usually you can't message someone who's a third connection, but actually I can go ahead and message Michael uh, directly because we're in this group. Again, I'd say that's a warm connection. You have something in common. You're both in the Graduate Career Consortium. So I might, might reach out to Michael and say, you know, hi, I'm really interested in learning about you and your background. How did you get to become an assistant dean? Um, and I could go ahead and, and message them and ask them for that informational interview or that short coffee chat or discussion. So this is a great way to A, get updates about topics that you're interested in, and B, to make new connections and to be able to directly message people. Um, Columbia University pays for my LinkedIn account, so I have premium and I'm able to send as many messages as I'd like. If you do not have LinkedIn premium, the system will limit how many messages you can send. So this message feature within groups is really handy because it allows you to kind of bypass this issue of, of sending messages without having LinkedIn premium. Um, LinkedIn also offers a trial LinkedIn premium for a month. If you're searching for a job, you might want to just try that and see how it goes. Um, and if you don't like it, you can cancel it right away. Or you might think about investing um, into getting a LinkedIn premium account for a short period of time during maybe your most intense and in the most intense part of your job search. So I think that this really covers how I use LinkedIn and how I use it strategically. I use it for jobs, I use it for getting updates, I use it to connect to people, and I use it to really gain information and connect to others in groups. Um, so if you have further questions about any of how to use LinkedIn, about how to make your profile really shine, please do make an appointment with us or with a GSAS Compass staff member via the GSAS Compass portal. Um, you can choose LinkedIn networking um, as a, a type of appointment and we can meet for 30 minutes and we can discuss your LinkedIn profile and how to make the most of your uh, profile and how to really use the platform to your advantage. Thank you so much for watching.